from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Opal Lee Berryman's Pioneer Preacher, starring Charles Bickford on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars and outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Newton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we present our dramatization of a story by Opal Lee Berriman called Pioneer Preacher. Miss Berriman's own father was a pioneer preacher, so that she brings to her story a wealth of personal reminiscence as well as a warm understanding of her subject. For the Reverend George Berriman was a pioneer and a preacher. He gave to the building of the West the strength of his hands, his heart, and his faith. There were many pioneer preachers in those days, true missionaries who gave their lives all the more truly by living them. And for our starring role tonight, we are indeed fortunate to have that distinguished Hollywood actor, Mr. Charles Bickford. And now, a word about Hallmark Cards from Frank Goss, before we begin the first act of Pioneer Preacher. At Easter, as on every important event in the lives of your friends and loved ones, there is a Hallmark card to say just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And the Hallmark on the back will carry an extra meaning for Easter Day, for it says you cared enough to send the very best. Now, Hallmark Playhouse, presenting Opal Lee Berryman's Pioneer Preacher, starring Charles Bickford. father was a pioneer preacher. You couldn't begin to write or tell the full story of his life because his story is the story of all the towns he ever lived in, all the people he ever knew, and all their prayers as well as his own. So I'm going to try and let you see my father as I remember him in 1905 when I was eight years old. In October of that year, Father and Mother and I were on our way to a little town in Texas called La Mesa. It was a hot afternoon, and Father and I were singing. Mother had fallen asleep beside us. What did a pioneer preacher have to be in those days? Well, for one thing, he had to be a philosopher and a psychologist. We may not be the best singers in the world, but by golly, what we lack in ability, we make up in enthusiasm, don't we? I guess so. Of course we do. You know, Opal, I'll wager all your little girlfriends would like to be in your shoes right now. What do they see when they look out their windows? Streets, houses, the same things they've seen every day of their lives. But you're looking at something they've never even seen. The desert. Sun, shadow, color, cliffs, ravines, cacti, mesquite. What's that? That's a coyote. I don't like it. Sure you do. You know what he's saying, Oval? He's saying, I've seen things today. I've seen men on horseback riding west across the desert. I've seen cattle moving west. I've seen civilization go forward one whole day. I've seen sunrise and sunset. And I've seen the Baptist minister and his wife and little girl on the way to La Mesa. Oh, oh, Father. Yes, sir. By now, every other coyote within earshot knows all about us. Look up yonder. That's La Mesa. Unless I'm very much mistaken. It's not very big, is it? Bigger than you'd think. It has 49 residents. Well, there it is. Our new congregation. Craddock and his wife attended church that first Sunday. 
and their almost grown son, Tom, Sheriff Lubeck, Judge Pothast and his wife, a wealthy rancher from just outside of town, Brother Fallon. It was an auspicious occasion. Brother Berryman, it certainly does a body good to hear a sermon again. Thank you, Sister Craddock. This is my son, Tom. He's going east to medical school next week. How do you do, sir? How do you do? I hope you'll come back here to practice when you graduate. I certainly hope to, Brother Berryman. Good to have you with us, Brother Berryman. Thank you, Brother Craddock. It's a fine boy I have here, isn't it? He certainly is. I don't blame you for being proud of him. Well, Father Berryman, it is good to have a man of God with us. Let me know if I can be of service to you. Thank you, Brother Fallon. Good day, Father. Father, you're not his father. Why did you let Brother Fallon call you that? Opal, Brother Fallon is a Roman Catholic. It's his form of address for a minister of his faith and denotes respect. I consider it a great honor to have him address me in that manner. Oh. Uh, Brother Berryman. Yes? I'm glad I caught you before you left the church. I am Brother Dissey, another worker in the field. How do you do, sir? Are you a Baptist preacher, Brother Dizzy? No, not exactly. At least I'm not licensed or ordained. But I go about from town to town trying to do the Lord's work as I see it. I thought I'd drop in on you and your good wife for lunch and dinner and perhaps the night. Tomorrow, I'll be on my way to another town. Well, come along, Brother Dizzy. What we have, we shall be happy to share with you. Coffee, Brother Dissy? Uh, no, thanks. Yes, I've been making a lot of plans for this town. It's been without a resident pastor for so long. I hope you won't have any difficulty handling any of the people. They get used to one man, you know. Well, I can only try, Brother Dissy. George, I need some more water. Would you be kind enough to step outside of the pump and get it for me? Of course I will. I'll go with you, Father. That was an elegant repast, Sister Bella. Elegant. I don't like Brother Dizzy. Now, now, Opal. Remember that a preacher and his family must all be diplomats. But he isn't a real preacher. He isn't ordained. Well, I do think he should have credentials. But he's still a man of God. And we must respect him as such. George, I can't stand him another minute. He thinks he's going to tell you how to conduct yourself in this town. How to conduct your church and... Now, oh, now, Mother, don't let yourself get all riled up. Oh, I'm sure I don't know why you didn't take the position at the seminary when they offered it to you. Why you had to decide to come out to this godforsaken spot. I was needed here. Now, let's all get back into Brother Dizzy and turn the other cheek, shall we? Look, Father, someone's coming. Reverend Berryman? Yes, I am Dr. Nasib Mesropian. I have just arrived in town tonight. I hope to practice here. How do you do, Dr. Mesropian? This is my wife, my daughter, Opal. Well, how, do how do you do, do you do, Doctor? I am going to be one of your congregation, Brother Berryman. I am a member of the Armenian Baptist Church. I am happy to hear it. The church can always use another member, and the town can certainly use a doctor. <laughs> even lawyer. And with all these things, he had to be a fighter. With only courage and faith and hope and brotherly love for weapons, he had to fight greed, suspicion, intolerance and hate. What is that? Why, it's a brick. Someone tossed it through the window. Who's out there? Well, whoever threw it is gone now. How's Rose? It is smallpox, all right. But we got her here and into isolation in good time, I think. Uh, may I see the paper tied around that brick, please? Yes. Of course, Dr. Mesrobian. We don't want any foreigners treating our women. Get out of town before we ride you out on a rail. <laughs> well, evidently I have friends here. Pay no attention to it. 
Oh, here, uh, help me tie the girl's hands to the side of the bed. If her hands are free, she will not be able to keep from scratching and she will ruin her face. Smallpox is a terrible thing to have strike in a village this size. If it spreads... I have sent for vaccine. If the mothers will allow me to vaccinate their children and be vaccinated themselves, it need not spread. They'll let you vaccinate. Don't worry. You have more faith than I, Reverend. Dr. Mesropian, medicine is your profession. Faith is mine. Do you mean to tell me that Rose Mahoney has a smallpox and that you're going to nurse her? I've had the smallpox. But Opal hasn't. Oh, surely you're not going to risk bringing it home. Let someone else do it. How can I ask someone else to do a thing that I would not be willing to do myself? Mother, I can't believe I'm hearing you correctly. I'm sorry. But when I think of Opal, I... Dr. Mesropian is coming over to vaccinate her tonight. I've been going to every house I could today, begging people to let Dr. Mesropian vaccinate them. And what did they say? Most of them agreed. A few objected. Brother Craddock said he didn't believe in vaccination. Judge Pothas said he didn't think it was necessary. But I believe they'll come around. May I come in? Of course, Doctor. I want to show you this. Oh, another note. Printed in crayon. Hmm. What does it say? It says, this is a white man's town. Unless you get out of your own free will, you'll go out with a coat of tar and feathers. Oh, isn't that terrible? I... Dr. Mesropian, I think I know the instigator of this thing. And I've already taken some steps in the matter. I'm reasonably sure that within a week we'll have the answer to the whole affair. If you'll just bear with me that long... I think I know the man myself, but I see no reason to subject my profession to such indignities. There are civilized communities in which one may work in peace. Dr. Mesropian, my profession is also one of dignity. But I am willing to abandon that dignity whenever necessary in order to establish the rights of a free man to live and work honorably in a free land. The man we seek is a case for a physician as well as a preacher. It is often more difficult to heal a diseased mind than to repair the body. But the benefits will reach on to generations yet to come. You must stay, Doctor. Well, Reverend, you have never let me down, and I shall not let you down if I can help it. Thank you. I can assure you that the majority of the people do want you here. We'll find out very quickly who's in back of this. And the first thing I'm going to do is to have a talk with the congregation tomorrow. Before we sing the closing hymn, I would like to say just a word to you. You and I are but a handful of Christian Americans in a small town in Texas. We are American not because of the color of our skin or the nature of our religion. We are American because our fathers, who came from almost every land in the universe, chose this land to prove to the world a mighty precept, that all men are equal, and that all men are entitled to certain inalienable rights. Among those rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Our fathers brought this doctrine across a doubting world and said to that world, we will show you that democracy can work. America shall be a stronghold for free men and a hope for enslaved men everywhere. My friends, we are a town of but 49 residents. How can democracy succeed among the many if we let it fail here among the few? How can religion succeed among the many if we let it fail here among the few? Hymn number 463. Let me.
In just a moment, we'll return to the second act of Pioneer Preacher, starring Charles Bickford. Have you noticed even the earth itself seems to get ready for Easter and to remind us with greenery and flowers that we too should prepare for this joyous day? And the sending of greeting cards is part of our preparation. For Easter is a time when we want to remember friends and loved ones. And if you're like most of us, I think you'll want the very finest Hallmark cards. If you think this sounds a little prejudiced on my part, just try this. Ask your friends what name they think of in greeting cards when they want to send the very best. I've tried this so many times. I know they'll quickly answer Hallmark cards. Even a glance at Hallmark Easter cards will tell you why that Hallmark on the back has become such a distinguishing symbol of quality. And there are Hallmark Easter cards for everyone. For friends you want to remember, for loved ones, you'll want to take this occasion to convey the thoughts you have all year long but too seldom express. Cards with flowers bright as spring. Cards that express the deep spiritual joy of Easter. Clever cards to enchant the children and cards for them to send to others. Tomorrow, stop at the friendly store where you buy Hallmark cards and see the beautiful collection of Hallmark Easter cards. You'll appreciate that Hallmark on the back, especially at Easter, to say you cared enough to send the very best. And now here is the second act of Pioneer Preacher, starring Charles Bickford. <laughs> My father's story is the story of all the towns he ever lived in, all the people he ever knew, and all their prayers as well as his own. What did a pioneer preacher have to be in those days? Philosopher, psychologist, doctor, counselor, fighter, even a detective. I thought you'd never get here and it was getting dark. I'm scared out of my wits that you'll get into trouble before this is over. They may kill you. That's exactly what they'll have to do before they get a chance to tar and feather Dr. Mesropian. Oh, Brother Dizzy was here. He says the Fallon girl's getting married and he's been asked to perform the ceremony. He's been asked to perform the ceremony? That's what he says. Believe that Mr. Fallon would do a thing like that. Mr. Fallon's in the East, Father. He isn't getting back until just before the wedding. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, if Kate wants Brother Dizzy, after all, it's her wedding. I heard the other day that Brother Dizzy's been out to the Fallon's making a big fuss over Kate's aunt. He'll end up as the preacher in this town yet. He's been telling everyone that you haven't added any new members to the church since you've been here. Oh, Mother, getting upset won't help. I don't know how you managed to take everything so calmly, George Berryman. Oh, sit down and eat your dinner. What's this on the table? It's a letter from Tom Craddock. Why didn't you tell me it was here? I'll see you later. What? George, where are you going now? I'm going over to talk to Brother Craddock. This is what I've been waiting for. But, George, your dinner... Put it on the back of the stove, Mother. This is more important. Oh. Do you know, Opal, there are times when it's not easy being a preacher's wife. Mr. Craddock, your son sent me a copy of the letter he wrote you. I'd like to quote from one part of it. He says, Do you know that you have right in La Mesa, one of the nation's greatest doctors? I have just learned this from the American Medical Association, and I have written to Dr. Mesropian, asking if he'll let me work with him when I come home. I hope you'll do everything you can to persuade him to agree to this. I hope someday I can become the kind of doctor he is. Brother Craddock... He's speaking of the man you wanted to tar and feather and run out of town. But how is a man to know? A lot of us don't like foreigners. Columbus was a foreigner. Lafayette was a foreigner. You yourself are not an Indian, are you? I sure ain't. Then you're a foreigner. Your father probably was English. And your mother, what was she? She was a half-breed. Oh, I see. So that's it. You thought you were inferior. And you started all this row about Dr. Mesropian to hide your own sense of insecurity. You're not inferior by birth, Brother Craddock. No one is. This fear of yours is of your own making, your own thinking. 
Well, what do you think I should do, Brother Berryman? Apologize to the doctor? I certainly do. Well, I don't know what he'll think when he learns that I'm the cause of... Brother Craddock, I think Dr. Mesropian knows. He wouldn't be the fine doctor he is if he weren't a good judge of human nature as well. He is also a fine enough man, I am sure, to forgive you. Well, I'll go and see him right away, Brother Berryman. I'm... I'm ashamed. <laughs> back now, it seems to me that sometimes he almost had to be a saint. Mother refused to go to see Brother Fallon's daughter married by Brother Dixon, but Father went, and he took me with him. I'll never forget that wedding. Here, Opal, let's sit down in these two seats at the back. My father, everyone's here, aren't they? At least everyone but Brother Fallon. I guess he isn't going to get here in time for the wedding. Evidently not. I asked Miss Kate why she was letting Brother Dissy marry her, and she said it was her aunt that arranged it, and that she would much rather have had you. Shh, Bobo. Oh, Father, there she comes. Isn't she beautiful? Yes, she is beautiful. The handsome groom. They make a fine couple. Father, look. There's Brother Fallon coming in the side door. Shh, Opal. The ceremony. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together. That's enough, Brother Dissy. Hey, That's what's enough. What's the We're not gathered here to have you say them sacred words over my daughter. We'll have our own place, so we'll have no wedding at all. I assume, Brother Fallon, that you didn't know that I'd been asked to conduct this wedding. You assume correctly, Brother Dissy. I didn't know you wouldn't be up there. Father Berryman, where are you? The team is in the corral. Ah, there you are. Now, will you be coming up here where you belong? It is right and proper my own children should be married by their own priests. Yes, Brother Fallon. Of course. Of course I'll come up. Mother? Oh, dinner's just about ready. How was the wedding? Mother... Father married them. Oh, it was beautiful. Brother Fallon said as long as there wasn't a Catholic priest in this part of the country, he'd have father and no one. Oh, I'm so glad. Well, I have some news, too. A dozen of the cowboys were by, and they're joining the church. So you have enlarged the church membership. The cowboys are joining the church. They were here just a little while ago. My heart is full. My heart is full. Oh, Father... I just love it here in the Mesa. Don't you? Yes, I do, Opal. I do indeed. There's a, a letter on the table from the board. Oh. Well, I wonder what new instructions they have now. Uh, Brother Fallon said he was donating the money to build a church. Oh, how wonderful. And he says... Mother, Opal, uh, would you be willing to pioneer another field? Pioneer? George. Another? No. Oh, no, you don't mean that. The board is suggesting that as soon as we feel things can be safely left to another pastor who is on his way, that we go to Seminole. Seminole? They do say, however, that although they feel we're badly needed there, that if we do not wish to leave, the new pastor can go on and we can remain here. He's evidently quite young and inexperienced in the field, though, and Seminole would be awfully hard for him. Well, you know, it's funny. Only the other day I was thinking that, well, that it would be nice to see what was going on a little farther west. After all, things have gotten pretty tame here. Sure they have. There'll be new adventures and new people Oh, I love you so. I love you so. I know what it means to you. Believe me, I know. Whither thou goest, I will go. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God, my God. Remember? I shall remember as long as I live. Opal, you're only eight years old now. Almost nine. Yes, almost nine. But someday you look back to the days we lived out here, as we made our slow way west, and you'll be able to say, 
I helped homestead this land, helped conquer the wilderness. I pioneered for God and for country. And so, once more, father, mother, and I loaded all our worldly possessions into a wagon and started further west. And now I was nine. It was 1906. And even then, I knew that there'd never been a man before or since cut from the same cloth as my father. Reverend George Berriman, pioneer preacher. Bickford and James Hilton will return in a moment. You know, Easter is a day when we like to exchange greetings with our friends and loved ones, yet often we can't find just the words to express our feelings. In fact, if it weren't for Hallmark cards, I'm sure many a message wouldn't be sent. But there are Hallmark Easter cards that you'll feel were especially written for each person on your list. Cards that say just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. In addition to Easter cards for your mother, dad, wife, or husband, and all those dear to you, you'll find cards for every friend, whether near or far away. For example, imagine the pleasure a friend in a distant city would receive from this card. It's titled, Across the Miles at Easter. And the greeting reads, A special Easter time hello that's being sent to let you know that though we are apart today, you're thought of in the warmest way. And countless happy wishes, too, go out across the miles to you. Not just when Easter time is here, but every day throughout the year. Why don't you stop in tomorrow at the friendly store where you buy Hallmark cards and see the complete showing of Hallmark Easter cards while the selection is still complete. Ask for Hallmark cards, the kind that tells your friends you cared enough to send the very best. Here again is James Hilton. We're really happy to have you with us tonight, Charles Bickford. That was a great performance. It was a great story, Mr. Hilton. I don't know how you do it, but you managed to get stories for Hallmark Playhouse that are like Hallmark cards. I mean, they have the same warmth and understanding and sincerity. Thank you. That's high praise indeed. Now, won't you tell us about next week? I'll certainly be in your audience. Good. And I think you'll like our Easter story. It's The Arbutus Bonnet by Margaret E. Sangster, a charming and appealing love story, and our star will be Miss Anne Blythe. And now, before I say goodnight, may I just remind you that more help is needed to carry on the important work of the Red Cross this year, to give disaster relief, to give needed services to our armed forces and veterans, to carry on the national blood program and other important community services. Your Red Cross needs your help to carry on its help. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our director-producer is Bill Gay. Our music was conducted by Lynn Murray. And our script tonight was adapted by Gene Holloway. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. <laughs> Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. Charles Bickford will soon be seen in the Paramount picture Riding High, co-starring with Bing Crosby. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you all until next week at the same time when James Hilton returns to present Anne Blythe in Margaret E. Sangster's The Arbutus Bonnet. And the week following, Charles Boyer in James Hilton's Appassionata. And in the weeks to come, a story known and loved by everyone, my sister Eileen on the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting.